we were just talking about how as much as bear cans are annoying, the lid is super nice as like a tray. I put all my dinner stuff on it and then I lay on my stomach up and put it up there. Because after I've been backpacking for a while, it hurts my back to like sit up for so long doing all the stuff in the tent and then eating. Anyway, super nice oops, tray situation. Also, more on Pop-Tarts later. Alright, I had something I wanted to share with you all that I realized I never discussed. Um, you may recall that um, when we were, when we had gotten that really weird resupply from, I think it's Hyatt Lake, uh, when we were planning on finishing the last 50 miles to the Oregon-California border, and then we had to get off because of the smoke, but in the meantime, we had already purchased this very expensive and very subpar resupply from the little store there. So anyway, not ideal, but whatever, it's fine. Um, I had recorded our toast and pop-ups, which were basically like off-brand Pop-Tarts, just the ones that they had there. And there was the whole thing with like, they were the same price, but then one of them came with more and da da, -da. Anyway. So, um, I was eating some of those Pop-Tarts for breakfast before we started the Sierras. This was, um, at the hotel in Bridgeport. And I was just kind of sitting there looking at the box as I was eating. And I saw that it said the original toaster pastry. And I was like, huh, that seems like a really big claim. I wonder what evidence there is to support this claim. So... I turned to Google, as one does, and it turns out that toast and pop-ups are indeed the original toaster pastry, or I don't know if that's the exact word, but basically something like that. Um, essentially what happened was, I forget the exact year, it was sometime in the six, like early 60s, I think, uh, Post created a product that they called Country Squares. Um, they were the same shape as the Pop-Tarts, I believe they were. Um, rectangular but anyway they called them country squares whatever year it was we'll just say it was 1961 I don't know if it, if it was or not but sometime around there and in February I think they had announced and like released this product but there was some kind of an issue with getting it to market either at all or like sufficient quantities and in the meantime, like six months later or something, um, I believe it's Kellogg's, announced their... What is happening? Sorry, my hiking poles got stuck in my bag. Announced their product called Pop-Tarts, like in, sometime in the fall. And I guess at this point, Country Scores were still not widely available. And Kellogg's, I guess, did a better job or had an easier time or whatever getting um, their product to the market. And it, like, totally overtook everything and became super popular. And Country Squares were just kind of, like, left in the dust. And uh, I guess they sold enough to, like, you know, keep making it. And obviously Post has many other products, so it wasn't like this was their only thing. But um, at some point, they changed the name to Toast and Pop-Ups. And then at some other point, and I don't know which came first, but they sold the product to some other company. So I don't believe that it is a post product anymore. But um, really interesting. These are not just knockoff Pop-Tarts. These were actually the original toaster pastry. And I have to say, I would need to do like a side-by-side, -side, maybe like a blind taste test or something. But I think that I may like the toast and pop-ups better. I felt like they had a little bit more filling uh, in the middle, which I really like. So yeah, there's your little history lesson about Pop-Tarts and toast and pop-ups. And uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. All right, we have started the alternate, which we're not using as an alternate, but as a resupply route and it's 17 miles long and we are starting that now be back later pct
Alright guys, I apologize for this angle. I don't want to unplug my headphones. I'm trying to finish my last CME podcast. I don't know how much I've talked about that, but the last couple weeks I've been uh, doing all these CME podcasts I found out that I needed to do. And uh, yeah, anyways. I'm on my last one, which is exciting. Um, but just wanted to document that this trail really something. Uh, interesting 34 miles we picked to add to the PCT. Pretty rough. But anyway, we just successfully had a 20 minute lunch where we sat down, we got our pads out. Oh, there's some nice water there. Uh, we ate. I'm not saying we've never eaten a 20 minute lunch before. I'm sure we have, but it was like a 20 minute lunch and we didn't feel rushed. I didn't feel rushed at least. Did you feel rushed? Not really. This is great. This is a this is a victory. A bit late to be having this type of a victory. I feel like I've really optimized actually several things in the last like week. It's <laughs> like would have been nice to do that sooner, but okay, I gotta go. This trail is river. This is one of those that has like a million rocks. And it wasn't that hard to get over, but I don't know. When there's this many steps, every step is a step that could possibly go wrong, so I'm happy I didn't fall in. Alright, so, good news. I finished all the podcasts I needed to do for my CME. I've been doing that since we started the Sierras, actually. Uh, so, yeah. Happy that that's done. Uh... I don't know if it's bad news, but this trail has been very challenging. Pretty steep, very rocky, uh, you know, some down trees and this and that. Just, just not, it's not an easy trail by any stretch. So it's been slow going. We've gone like, I don't know, 11 miles or so. And I feel like I've gone like 20. So, not ideal, especially because they're non-PCT miles, which is just a little bit demoralizing. I think it's going to end up being like 34 non-PCT miles, which is just sad, but that's okay. Uh, our camp's coming up in about a mile and a half, and then we'll have about eight miles, I think, tomorrow to get to North Lake, where hopefully... We'll find someone to give us a ride. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go, but yeah, hopefully. Anyway, um, that's all. The trail is a little hard to follow here, so I'm just going to take a look at that. Okay, so we're about two miles short of Paiute Pass, about 11,000 feet. And this is the scenery. And we're going to camp around here, get up early and do our favorite thing, try to hitch into Bishop from North Lake. And that is Paiute Pass straight ahead. That's where we're going tomorrow. Pretty cool waterfall next to our camp. All right, caught up with Henry, made it to camp. Camping down yonder, is that right? Yeah. Yep. Down yonder. Down yonder. It is, uh, it is real nice, real nice up here. We talked about maybe going further, cause we could go further. But then we're just gonna be like real high up, and we only have like eight miles to do tomorrow as it is, so that seems reasonable. All right, tent to set up. We're a little pre-golden hour here, I would say. This is the earliest we've been at camp in a long time. This was a very tiring day, uh, which is fine. But uh, yeah, really nice view. Henry is going to get us some water right now. And going to be an early night. Tonight, I have something very special and very different for dinner. It is a salmon packet instead of tuna packet. This is what I thought I'd be eating the entire time because until Pamela pointed out that tuna basically tastes, tuna in a packet basically tastes the same as salmon in a packet, 
and it's a lot easier to find and I think it's cheaper. Uh, I thought there was no way I would ever, ever, ever eat tuna. I used to leave the room when my mom would have tuna. Look how far I've come. Anyway, Pamela found this in a hiker box at Red's Meadow. So, too good to pass up. Took it, and I've been eating some double tuna the past few nights because I had extra. Also, the golden hour is quite amazing out here. So, I'm actually eating uh, dinner outside on a perfect sitting rock because it's not too buggy and not too cold yet. And oh, so beautiful. We're trying to we're trying to take a selfie here, and Pamela just uh, bit a hole in her jacket trying to mess with it or something. I was trying to pull my sleeve down, and my tooth broke through. She does call her teeth tiny knives, which is true. Oh my gosh! Well, gonna do a little repairing tonight with my tenacious tape. All right. Let's go. Okay, this reminds me. I guess Henry's face doesn't really need to be in it. This reminds me of um. When we went to the enchantments in the fall and all the larches were in bloom, because... I like how you call them in bloom. Oh. That's a good description. I don't know. What is it called? They were yellow. Yeah. Anyway, um, because everything like looks all yellow, it's, uh, it's really, really gorgeous. Does it make this worth it? Yes, for me. <laughs> Not for Pamela. It doesn't... This doesn't make it worth it, but the whole reason we're doing this is, is important for work so yeah. it already was worth it and this is just a bonus look at that reframing at its best well my review is that flavored tuna is way better than unflavored salmon i miss my tuna never thought i'd hear it's my myself say that